Morning ladies and gentlemen, it's Gus here and it's now time for my next review in the ongoing Warhammer 40,000 rulebook review series and this is one that I've been looking forward to and I'm sure that um, a few of you guys have been looking forward to as well and that is Warhammer 40,000 third edition. Here it is, one of the most famous images in Warhammer 40,000, um, the Black Templars. Boom, look at that cover, beautiful, beautiful art, alright. This is where I started the game, okay. Back in the um, in the dark days of 1998, uh, this is where I started wargaming. Um, yeah, it was yeah 1998 it was released. Now, um, for those of you that researched when Games Workshop became public, um, you may be may or may not be aware of the changes that were taking place in Games Workshop at the time. In 1991, there was a management buyout. Games Workshop. Bearing in mind, Games Workshop has been going since 1975. In 1991, there was a management buyout of Games Workshop, um, and bearing in mind, um, the second edition book was released in um, 1993. And remember, this is a time of change. You know, in the second edition review, the last one I did, there was big changes between Road Trader and second edition, and now it's continuing that trend. When we get to third edition, and when we get this thing open, um, you'll see why I'm not going to do 4th and 5th edition, I'm just going to jump straight to 6th because essentially the time of change is more or less over in terms of the, where they wanted to go with the main rulebook. They, they, they hit it here. This is, this is where the, the, the change kind of ended and this has just kind of kept going all the way through to 6th edition really. Um, relatively unchanged compared to the last editions. Okay, so... Um, since, I, since the, the management buy of Games Workshop in 1991, since that happened, fans that are complaining um, of what Games Workshop is doing now, I mean, you can go on all the forums and stuff and see what fans are complaining about. They've been complaining about it since the management buy in 1991, because since then, that's when Games Workshop wanted to go in this new direction of focus on younger demographic um, with you know, essentially more money, really, um, and take attention away from retaining as opposed to recruiting. Um, and they've been going in that trend since 1991. So it's actually been quite a slow transition, um, really. So it's not been particularly fast. I mean, there's been lots of small fast changes, but the overall scheme of things has is, is kind of been, you know, going where they wanted to wanted it to go over a relatively long period of time. So Warhammer 40,000 third edition. This is where I started. This is where, this is the full rule book, unlike the second edition review where I had the, the smaller rule book that came in the... Um, in the, the, the starter box. The starter box of this one, you got um, Space Marines, um, Black Templars, which was my first chapter as well, and you got Dark Eldar, which were fucking terrible. They were bloody awful. They were hideous miniatures. <laughs> There's pictures of them in here, and they were, they were fucking terrible. So, right, let's get it open. Ooh! Right, so as I said, um, published in 1998, the time of change is nearly at an end. We're going into a different age now. I think we're going into more of a... We're going from a Zinchian age into more of a... Maybe a Slaneshi or maybe a Nurgle age. I don't know. Anyway, so... Um, now... Hmm. I'll go through the rulebook first. Uh, and then, at the end, I'll, I'll give you my thoughts on... Kind of the changes in the direction. And my overall thoughts on, on kind of where... The game more or less plateaued um, into what we know what we know now. So the the book opens and you get you get you get hit basically by by seriousness. The, the, pretty much the first the first thing you see is the Eternity Gate, okay, and you get all this really serious hardcore artwork. You get the Imperial Palace, the throne room, and a picture of the Emperor. All, all very serious stuff here. Um, that's the first thing, and then, then you get the contents page. Okay. Now you'll notice with this edition, it is again, I'd say simplified would be the correct term for the transition into second edition, but dumbed down is definitely the term for the transition into third edition. I, it, it's not simplified; it is dumbed down, and you'll see by the by the way they've laid it out when you get into the rules section why I say instead of simplified, the, you know, the, the term dumbed down. Um, just a quick one here, 
Um, I did mention the dark older. Yeah, this is what they used to look like. Fucking Jesus. I mean, really. Those were bad even back then. I mean, they were bad. <laughs> they, they've always been bad. Um, and again, what I mentioned with Eldar, they, they've relatively relatively unchanged. Look at that. It's like, it is. It is the same thing. But, you know, the Falcon, it's the same thing. Great. Awesome. Um, okay, so... Now, this is where you get your, your stereotypical layout of the 40k books as we know today. So, first thing you get to, a typical Space Marine army. What to start with with a Space Marine army? They've got a very, very quick rundown, fighting a war game. And they give you a quick example of how a game would be played through. <clears throat> and this gives you a very good, the very first thing on collecting a, a Space Marine army. This gives you an idea now, where they, remember what I said, of, you know, they've got to the plateau now of where they want the game to be, where they want the scale to be, so that people have to buy more miniatures um, in order to play the games. So Rogue Trader going from very much a skirmish game right through to second edition, which is kind of in between kind of platoon level really, up to this, which is your that that's the sort of size of, of game in third edition. And really, I mean yes they've started to creep up to slightly larger games, but really it's it's they've 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 hit the plateau here. This is this is where they want you to be because they want you to buy a lot of miniatures. They want you to buy a lot of stuff. So they've got a lot of pictures in here of big, impressive armies to invoke that sense of, oh, wow, that's big and impressive. Lots of awe, lots of awe-inspiring pictures. Um, and that's that's where they want the game to be. So they've got there, really, with with, with third edition. Um, so this is, this is the first large-scale game. Now, when I said dumbed down, I did mean it, because second edition was simplified and streamlined. And this really is... Because you've got that change from 1991 upwards of they want to target the younger demographic. Look, when I was a kid, if you try to get me into rogue trade, I would have been like, "What the hell is this?" You know, I don't. Children naturally don't have the attention span, okay? And you know, that's not a fault. That's just the way the kids are. All right, they don't have the attention span of adults. So to try and get somebody to concentrate for long enough to learn the rogue trade rule is not going to happen. So they had to dumb it down. They had to really simplify it, okay? Um, and that is that is this army. So they, they go through one of the one of the first things they go through is painting your models. They go through the, the starter box stuff. So your black templars and oh god, dark elder. Um, they go through uh, your tabletop battlefield. See the thing is is I really want to go through a lot of the pictures in this review, but the, the, every page you've got loads of pictures on. It's, it's it's packed full of pictures. I mean, here we go through the first page, painting your stuff. Then you got like the next one. Your, your tabletop battlefield, where they start covering all terrain. Um, and building your own terrain. Ha! Ah, yes, Games Workshop used to encourage you building your own terrain. And it's actually pretty cool stuff. Um, i got a big, huge showcase of all different wargaming tables here. Again, lots of miniatures on them to inspire that sense of awe. Setting up the battle. Again, this is going through like your first battle. Um, and then we, hit, then we hit the actual rules section. Okay, we get we get a very serious looking Imperial Aquila. Boom, and we hit the, the actual rules book here. Um, again, you open it. The first thing you see is some very very serious words and a very very serious picture in the grim dark, the darkness of the 41st millennium. So this is where it goes from makes that again that transition from being a light-hearted fun game to being very serious. It's all very serious in the in the 41st millennium and very serious and. You know, there's all the stuff that happens, and space marines are, you know, get all these modifications, and this is where the law really starts to get taken really seriously. All the background gets really dark and really serious. Um, so they go through a rules introduction, what you need. Remember, in the previous editions, you had different dice, now it's just D6 and your scattered dice. Characteristic profiles are now what we know them as the modern profile weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, wounds. Initiative, attacks, leadership, and save. That's it. Done. Um, they go through the turn, and now it's just broken down into move, shoot, close, assault. That's it. Your turn sequence, there it is. Really simple, move, shoot, close, assault. That's it. Done. Okay. Who gets first turn? Um, you get some exceptions, and they just go through different phases here. You've got your movement phase. Warriors on foot move six inches. Done. Moving models in a unit. Two inches coherency. Terrain, classifying terrain, terrain effects, um, and your, your your movement phase is. And when when I say pages in this, the 
the pages are filled out. Okay, you could you could you could squeeze this on one on one page. The movement phase is three pages. Then you then you're in a shooting phase. Shooting phase. Choose a target, measure range, roll to hit, roll to wound, remove casualties. Simple. Done. Choose a target, line of sight. There, and then there's no more there's no more firing arcs in this. So there's no more like in in Rogue Trader in second edition where you've got the the arcs like 45 degree arcs or 30 degree arcs. There's n there's none of that. Facing doesn't matter, essentially, um, except with vehicles, which is, which is, it has to really with the armor values. Um, no pre-measuring, unlike sixth edition. So you 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 nominate a unit that is shooting, nominate a unit to shoot at, and then you measure the range. If it's on a range, you waste your shot. Fine. Roll to hit, exactly the same as it is now. Ballistic skill, and you get a score to hit. Roll to wound. The the, the table is unchanged. It's exactly the same table from second edition. Um, and it's, it's still the same as it is now. All your weapons, in terms of the strength and armor piercing value, remember before in, in Rogue Trader in a second you got a minus to your save, now you've got AP. Boom. All the way, same, as, same as it is now, all the way up to 6th edition. Um, and same as cover, cover gives you a bonus to your save as opposed to before where it gave, gave you a minus to your roll to hit. Now it just gives the person a bonus to save. And it's exactly the same. All the armor is exactly the same. Space Marine armor 3 plus, Terminator armor 2 plus, Eldar is 4 plus. Aspect armor, that is, mesh armor is five plus. So all the armors are exactly the same as they are now. Um, and and now, so so you know, like I said, everything's getting a lot more serious now. Right? But all this breakdown of the armor, one foot in reality, one foot in the forty-first millennium, trying to trying to give you that suspense of disbelief, kind of kind of semi explaining how things work and justifying things, all to make it a bit more serious. Um, a bit more grim and dark, so you, you can imagine it happening. Um, and yet, yeah, we've got the shooting phase, again, AP, cover, here we go, we've got your cover charts, 4+, plus, 5+, plus, 6+, plus. Um, saves, and they're invulnerable saves, yet yeah, they've got invulnerable saves in here, cover saving throws, weapon types, rapid fire, assault weapons, heavy weapons, exactly the same as on our, our they're not exactly the same, rapid fire have changed in 6th edition, um, so they give you a little chart there, so it's really, really simple to follow. Um, templates. Uh, templates, I think now, if, if a template touches you, it hits you. It was then, it was, if it partially covers you, it hits you on a 4+. plus. Okay, fine. Um, they've got your weapons table. It's exactly the same as it is now. I mean, they're adding in weapons, but all the core weapons, like your, all of these here, bolt guns, last guns, multi-lasers, last cannons, sniper rifle, it's all the same. Um, Barrage weapons. Yeah, again, here we go. We've got like lots and lots of filler pages that fill the rules out. That, that don't actually add into the rules, but all add into the into the feel, into the dark feel of the game. You know, one foot in reality, one foot in the 41st millennium. I'm trying to justify everything. Everything's getting very serious now. There's there's no there's no funny pictures. There's nothing that adds flair to the game. It's very much this is the way it is. This is how you play it. Very very simplified. Very dumbed down. Now they're already they're in they're in assault after a few pages. Um, they've got special close combat attacks, um, and it's really really short. Weapon skill versus weapon skill. The charts exactly the same. Toughness, strength versus toughness, exactly the same. Okay, then you've got winners, advancing and consolidating, sweeping advances, multiple combats, drawing, morale checks, using leadership, um, tank shock. Uh, they got regrouping. This is where the Space Marines get there, and they shall know no fear rule. Um, we got characters in here, vehicles, which again, as we know them now, you get your get your your types of vehicles, things like open top, fast skimmers, tanks, walkers. Um, even even dismounting, dismounting is 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 exactly the same at, back in 1998 as it is now in in, two, in 2013 when this it is being filmed. Um, Vehicle shooting, ordnance weapons, shooting at vehicles, shooting from vehicles, the armor values, um, front, rear, and side armor values. Um, this this is the main thing where you'll find these these little tweaks as it goes from from third to fourth to fifth to sixth. Is is vehicles one of the things? Um, now they've got hull points, um, but the, these old charts you probably remember these. Um, crew crew stun, crew shaken results, you know all that sort of stuff. Uh, that had remained relatively unchanged up until 5th edition. Um, vehicles and assault, tank shock, 
Um, they've got cavalry, yeah, obligatory jump pack troops. Um, jump packs what move 12, 12 during the movement, and they can move six in the assault. And and that, that, there we go. Like that's it. Like like if you look at this book, okay, and this is the same thing with the um, with the new rule book, is if you actually look at the rule section, it's it's really really small. Like okay, so 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 this this is the thickness of the rule book. Okay, it's a pretty big book, and that's the rule section. All the rest of this is all serious stuff. It's all grim dark. It's all you need to take this really seriously. This is this is really important. This is you know you need to take this game seriously because. It's, the 41st millennium, it's really dark, serious, really serious stuff. And, and all the artwork and all the background evokes that sort of stuff. It's, it's all, it all turns into an extremely serious game. And now, there's a reason I'm harping on about this. <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain this at the end. Um, so they go through, they go through all the background. Don't get me wrong, I really like the 40k background. I think the 40k background is very evocative. It really draws you in. Um, but it's ripped off. You know, I mean, geez, this, this, this kind of background was a dime a dozen back in the 80s. Let's be honest. The whole grim dark, yeah, it, it was all over the place. Um, so, but anyway, that said, I do like the background. I enjoy some of the stuff in terms of all the, you know, the warp and warp travel and all that. It's, it's fun. I like the background. Um, they go through the Emperor, the Inquisition, Dominion of Man, the God Emperor. They go, see, this is something cool that they don't have in the new stuff, is they, they, they start going through all the different Imperial Guard regiments. Um, well, they do actually, they do have it in the new stuff, but they only sell like one, one type. Uh, there's, there's a picture in here that's become quite famous, actually, that people have kind of used for predicting what GW is going to release next in terms of, excuse me, in terms of alien races and what have you. And bearing in mind, at this time, there was no Necrons as we know them. There was no um, Tau as we know them. And there was this other dangerous aliens picture, and this has become fairly famous there, because they're like thinking, oh, they're going to release the Hurud, which are like space scaven, basically. Um, so there's that interesting picture in there, um, and they've got the enemy within a little section of chaos. Another quite famous picture of a, of a really big space marine looks really badass. Um, Okay, and then they're going into things like battlefield terrain, terrain generators um, for different worlds, which is quite fun. Uh, they've got ash wastes, agri worlds, ice worlds, death worlds, and you roll two d six to generate terrain for different areas of the terrain of, of, the, of the, the board that you're playing on. Choosing scenarios and missions, um, they've got your your force orc chart, which is again has remained exactly the same up until now. Um, Hidden deployment, scenario special rules, night, you know, night fighting infiltrators, all exactly the same, deep striking, preliminary bombardment, I don't know if that's in the new one actually, hidden, hidden setup, sentries, sustained attacks, victory points, um, and then they go into the standard missions. Okay, so, so really, there's actually, even though this rulebook is big, um, they could have made a lot smaller, you know, so... They go through all the missions. You've got standard missions here: cleanse, night fight, patrol, recon, rescues, taken battles, taken holds, bunker assaults, meat meat grinder. You cracked up a story and send us to the meat grinder, Dylan. Ah, uh, they got raids. So, so they've got quite a lot of missions in here, which are quite fun. Designing your own missions. They got they got campaign rules, which are really a bit they're a bit poxy. They're in there. It's, it almost feels like they put them in there out of out of a um, just like a you know default, well we have to have some com campaign rules. Let's just throw them in, so they're they're pretty pretty meh. You get like experience points and stuff, but to be honest, with the size of armies that they're encouraging you to play, it'd be it'd be impractical and it would lose all its character. Okay. Um, now this is this is something that I really like about the third edition rulebook, and this is something they don't do anymore. Um, now you, you've made the change here. We've made the change. We've gone from Rogue Trader through to 2nd edition, through to 3rd edition, and we've made a change. This is this is essentially the rulebook as we know it now, and it's gone through 4th and 5th and 6th edition, but it's really the same freaking thing. Okay, but what they don't do anymore now, is they don't give you army lists. Of course they don't. You know, you've got to buy, if you want to buy a, an army, you've got to buy the codex, okay? Um, and in this one, they actually give you the army lists. For like... All major races. You've got Space Marines, and they, they, like these are the proper armies. I mean, you could still buy the codexes at the time, and what started to happen was they started to include special rules in the codexes, so you like kind of had to. But 
all you really needed, again, was the main rulebook. You bought this and you were, you were, you were sorted, like that was you, you were done. Um, the, obviously the first one, obligatory, Space Marines. And they've got everything in here, as we know them now. HQ, Librarian, Chaplain, Space Marine Command Squad, Terminators. Um, and all this stuff um, has remained relatively unchanged. I'll, I'm actually going to do, when I get to 6th edition, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to do a 6th edition review video. I'm also going to do a compare in terms of stats to the new stuff. But that's beside the point. But all of this stuff has remained unchanged. I mean, even compared to the new Space Marine Codex, which has like, just come out, <laughs> this stuff's exactly the same. They're just, they're just recycling now. They're just going through the same thing over and over. Dark Elder. They've got the Dark Elder. God damn it, they look awful. Um, but very serious. Awful but serious. They've got the Dark Elder army. Tyranids. Eldar. Um, then they've got a huge filler section full of, all the, full of all the hobby stuff. So this is all your, your colour page in the middle. Going through, going through all of this hobby stuff in here. Big armies. Impressive stuff. Dark, grim dark, not very colourful um, in terms of bright colours and 90s. Larger armies, very serious. You know, they've got, they've got these huge filler sections here, um, which don't get me wrong, I like. Lots of nice pictures, lots of pretty pretty painted models. Um, you know, good stuff. Okay, we've got more lists. Chaos Space Marines. Um, oh god, okay, quickly, quickly, gotta show you this. Oh Jesus, they, yeah, this, this is the old Dark Eldar. D there they are. They are freaking awful. They, they were never good. They, they, uh, what the, what were they thinking? They were never good miniatures, okay? Anyway, so, we've got Chaos Space Marine Army Lists. So again, back to, the, back to all the Army Lists here. Chaos Space Marines, um, Imperial Guard, Orcs, Sisters of Battle, brilliant. Okay, and then they've got um, a Heroes of the Imperium Army. So this is like Inquisitors, yep. So you, you, with assassins, which were, which at the end of third edition, if anybody remembers this, assassins were fucking ridiculous. They were so goddamn powerful. Um, so, yeah. So this is the rulebook. So I mean, they give you all the roster cards and stuff. They give you a weapons table at the end, um, and they give you, you know, it's it's all filler in this book. There's lots and lots of filling stuff to to fill in all the just the sections of of stuff to get you into the setting more than the rules. Um, and they give you they give you a cool um, a, a quick reference sheet. But they give you permission. They give you permission at the bottom. They give you permission to photocopy these pages. Like we need your permission in the first place. Yeah, right. Um, and, and that's it. Okay. So thoughts. I started with this rule book. Okay. This this is where I started wargaming. Not role playing and not gaming in general, but war gaming. I started war gaming with Warhammer 40,000 third edition, and like I said, I got given the Rogue Trader rulebook very shortly afterwards, and I thought Rogue Trader was better. I preferred Rogue Trader. Now, there's a couple of things here. Okay, so so this is really, like I said before, this is where we see everything getting very serious. This is where we see the modern Warhammer 40,000. This is it. It's right here. This this is modern Warhammer 40k as we know it now. Since 1998, relatively unchanged, okay, except for in this one they gave you all the army lists in the book, which is freaking cool, okay, you're not going to get that anymore, let's be honest. Now, this is the thing, okay, this is the, this is the, this is the crux of the issue, is that you, you've, got, you've got an evolution here from, from light-hearted and very fun to play skirmish game through to something in the middle, a bit light-hearted, a bit more serious, the transition book, okay, just to 40k as we know it now, really. Okay, so skirmish, medium, large scale. Fun, semi-serious, really serious. Core rules, same, same. All your, your core rules are exactly the same. Now, there's a problem with that, okay, and the way the game works. Anybody who's played tabletop wargaming before knows Warhammer is, is an I-go-you-go game. Okay, it started, it started that way in Warhammer 40,000 Rogue Trader. I have my little team of eight dudes, and I do all my stuff. I move and shoot and do silent powers, and then you go, and then it's your turn. In a skirmish game, that's fine, okay, because really, it's, it's, the turns are going to flow quickly. You don't, have, you don't have as many models to move. Um, it's, it's a lot more interactive, um, because you, you coach to have a GM, and weird terrain, and shit leaping out at you, um, and to play campaigns, so it's a lot more interactive. 
but really it's it's not too much of a problem. I go, then you go. As soon as you get up to third edition, where you've got these huge fucking armies, and it's an I go, you go system, you play through your whole turn, and then I'll play through my whole turn. And it takes fucking ages. And all I'm doing in your turn, really, is rolling on the saves and taking dudes off. I'm just standing there like a fucking gimp. Alright? Standing there going, yeah, brilliant, doing your shit, watching what you do. This is really... And I genuinely actually get bored. Like, I get fucking bored because I'm staying there. All I'm doing is I'm rolling armor saves, watching it, watching the fucking TV or chatting to a buddy while it's somebody else's turn. Yeah, roll some armor saves, whatever, yeah, taking them off, fine, fuck, whatever. Okay. And that was fine in a skirmish game. But when you get to a big game, that's not fine because it gets fucking boring. It's, it's not dynamic. It's very static. I move to you. And then I shoot you. And you stand there and go, ow, I've taken a, a wound. And it's very static. It feels like a fucking Lego game, all right? Um, and the other problem is, um, is you think about the evolution in, in, in the seriousness. This is, again, Lighthearted, a very serious, grim dark. All the books are starting to come out now. Everything's getting really serious. The law is getting really important. You know, people are an expert and they argue about, oh, the origins of this and this and that and the next thing. So you've got a well-developed, really serious law that still uses the same, essentially, Lighthearted rule system a D6 based system. It's not a serious system. It was never intended to be. If you, if you want a serious system, look at War Machine and Hordes. That's a serious system. And that's, that's got something to do with you know, 2D6 as a core mechanic and normal distribution and statistics. That's another video I'll make. But that's a more serious system. Okay, so you've, you've essentially got a rulebook now and a system, Warhammer 40,000, that's got a really serious background which makes people take the game seriously. And, do, and people do, geez, fucking hell, out of all, out of all the war games I've played, Warhammer 40,000 more so than any, even more so than Warhammer, in terms of the background and story, people take it really fucking seriously. Like, they, people take this game really seriously, okay? But it's using the same core system as a game that was never intended to be taken really seriously. It was intended to be, be a fun tabletop war game, okay? So the two mismatch. The core system of the game doesn't match the seriousness, okay? So that's what frustrates me about Warhammer 40,000. I like, look, I like the background of Warhammer 40,000. What I don't like is I don't like how they've evolved the background and everything to do with the background's evolved, but they've made the game simpler, which is fine, but they've not changed the system. The, the system has not kept up with the fluff. You know, and all, all the background material it's remained relatively unchanged, and I don't like that, and it, it doesn't match. The, the system of the game does not match the seriousness in which the game is intended, okay? And it, it goes back to the whole I go, you go thing. It, that would have been easy to change, but they didn't change it. All they've done is they've added in a lot more filler material. Um, they wanted you to buy more miniatures. Naturally, they're a company. They want to make more money. Um, so they've encouraged larger games, and everything in the rule book kind of points in that direction. And you'll see, really, when I, when I go, th go through the 6th edition stuff, is that not a lot has changed. And... In my previous videos, I did mention recycling rules, and you'll see what they've done. They've just recycled rules. Um, when they could have made such awesome changes to the rules to keep up with serious fluff, they could have made the rules more serious, you know, um, to keep up with, with the background. And the, it just it doesn't match. It doesn't feel right. When you, you know, I always say to people, right, if you go from playing War Machine and Hordes to playing 40K, you'd be like, what is this? Without reading any of the background and stuff, you'd be like, what the hell is this shit? Like, You'd be flabbergasted. So look, final thoughts. Warhammer 40,000 third edition. This will always have a special place in my heart. Okay, it really will. I started wargaming with this book. I love the art. I, I love the background. I love the seriousness of it. Um, but I have to look at, th at things objectively. Even though you know I, I love this book, I do. But objectively, it's not great, is it? Let's let's be let's be blunt. So I look forward to going to sixth edition and giving you my thoughts on that in the final comparison of all these editions. Um, and then after that I'll go into some statistics uh, and bits and bobs um, after that. Thanks very much guys, have a good one.